Welcome along to another video presentation from the Computer Information Agency. My name is Robert Crane and in this video we'll have a look at connecting to Office 365 PowerShell. Okay, the first place you want to start to get uh, PowerShell operating on your desktop uh, basically is you'll need to log into your Office 365 portal and then over on the right hand side you'll notice that there is a downloads link so if you click on that depending on what plan that you have you'll notice that you may have office software you'll also have the ability to install link but most importantly down the bottom here you'll find the ability to set up and configure your desktop app so this is going to uh, download and install the sign-on assistance for office 365 uh, once that is installed if you go and have a look at your services so if we go down to M here what we will find is we'll find a Microsoft online sign-in assistant service so there you can see that has already been installed so again that is the first piece of software that needs to be installed on the system to uh, access uh, PowerShell the next thing that you'll need to download basically is the Office 365 commandlets for PowerShell and again you can find these basically uh, via a download so again um, you'll see that I've got the sign in assistant here but what I'm looking for is the Microsoft Online Services module for Windows PowerShell you'll notice that is in a 32-bit and a 64-bit ver version so once you download the appropriate version for your machine uh, what you'll then find is that you'll have an icon on your desktop like this one which says Microsoft Online Services module for Windows PowerShell now what we'll need to do is firstly is we'll need to right mouse click on this and run this as an administrator so we have the um, appropriate rights uh, that'll take a second obviously to load probably what you'll need to do is you will need to do something to set the execution uh, policy initially uh, what that's going to do basically is allow you to run um, uh, scripts that aren't signed that have a lower security uh, setting uh, trust level basically they're scripts that you create yourself so in this parameter the execution policy we change to remote signed you'll see a warning indicating that you're about to change that policy and it will allow you to run scripts that may not be trusted so in this case we'll accept yes so again you'll notice that with PowerShell all we get for confirmation that the script has run um, is the fact that it uh, comes back to a blank line without any uh, any confirmation generally so the first thing we now need to do is to run a command called import module ms online hit enter again you'll notice that it's simply accepted there is no prompt as to that being correct the next thing I need to do is log into my office 365 um, tenant so what I need to do to that is I'm going to basically store that login in a uh, variable called dollar cred so if I run that command it now asks me to log in to my office 365 um, tenant and I need to do that as an administrator so I log in and that information is now stored in that variable dollar cred that I can now use and I'm going to use it to now connect to the MS online service using the credential dollar cred okay so that will now connect to my MS Office 365 service using the credentials that I've used so give that a second uh, to complete and it comes back again letting us know uh, basically that it has completed so now that I have uh, that I can run some basic uh, sh um, PowerShell commands so for example if I want to have a look at the MS online user I can just get minus MS OL user and you'll see that that is uh, a list of the users that are currently in the tenant now most of the work you probably want to do with Office 365 uh, involves working with Exchange at this stage the PowerShell won't allow us to do that because we need to load the modules for um, our Exchange uh, online so what we'll do is I'll just go to this script that I've saved 
previously prepared and I will just copy this line that I need to do that and I will go in and paste that into here. So what this is going to do basically is set up a new variable called session which will basically log in to Microsoft Exchange online and at the URL ps.outlook.com using the credential that we've previously saved. So I hit enter, I'll allow that to uh, complete. You'll see that I get an orange uh, warning in PowerShell that lets me know that I've been redirected to the appropriate um, URL for my um, Office 365 tenant. The next thing that I need to do now is to actually import that session. So what I'm going to do here is again edit and I'm going to paste that in. You'll notice that I'm going to import dash PSS session um, dollar session. So I'm going to take the variable, the login details that I just created and import that into a uh, Exchange Online session and you'll notice that doing so you get a banner up the top here, you'll get a number of uh, commands loading so you'll know that that is working, you can see it's loading in the objects uh, when we're finished with uh, that command we go back to the command prompt. Now here for example what I can do um, so I'll just close this one down, I'll open uh, another script that I've got here so again this is a rather large command so I'll just copy that and I will paste that into my command here and basically what this is going to do is going to get all the mailboxes it's going to look at the statistics for those mailboxes and then what it's going to do is display the output as the display name whether it's an archive mailbox, how many items are in there and the total size of the mailboxes and it's going to put it in a nice table for me. So if I hit enter, now goes out and runs the exchange uh, PowerShell command which was get dash mailbox and I now see that two mailboxes haven't been uh, opened as yet so they won't give me any data but the remaining four there obviously um, have been and they will give me whether it's archived, how many items in there and the total count. So again a nice easy way to get information that you require. But the power of PowerShell is the fact that it's a scripting language. So again what I can do now is if I run as the administrator again, open a blank session, okay. So what I'm actually going to do here is you'll see that this is uh, the script, the login script, so all those login commands that I typed previously I've actually put them into a script. So what I can do now here is I can simply execute that script. Okay, so it's going to go out and run what you see above there. It's going to ask me for my credentials. So I'm going to log into my Office 365 tenant. I do that with the right login and the right password you'll now see that it's actually going out, connecting to MS Online, it's now importing the session and in a minute you should see the same sort of banner appear but um, the good thing about this is because we've scripted it, because we've made sure that it all operates correctly um, we know that there's not going to be any mistake and we're always going to be able to connect directly to Office 365 so again here's the um, downloading of the Exchange commandlet allowing us to uh, get that remote session to start and we'll come back to a prompt. Okay, so again, not only can we do that for the login, but here's the mailbox statistics ones which I just ran. So if, again, if I go in here and go scripts and again run the script here, mailbox stats dot ps1, hit enter. Again, that will go out and execute that script and give us the results, same sort of results as we were after. So again, um, you can use the PowerShell uh, command line as an interactive source, you can type them manually if you, if you um, can remember them, however it's much much easier to obviously get the scripts that you want and save them out and then basically run those as required. So that's all for this video. I want to take the time to thank you for watching this video from the CIA Ops and remind you that we have a number of free and paid publications at www.ciops.com forward slash downloads. If you've got any feedback or comment on this video, please send it to me at director at ciaops.com and keep up to date with what's happening in the CIAOps via the blog supportweb.ciaops.net.au forward slash blog.